we're seeing a very strong bounce in the market green right across the board and that also includes the semiconductor space nvidia up around eight percent amd up more than six and you probably shouldn't be surprised to see some very strong gains given that we have seen some large drops because some of the best days in the market have in fact come during bear markets, during large drops. In fact, seven of the 10 best days, as we just mentioned in bear markets, in 2020, the second best day happened immediately after the second worst day. But still, we note over the last week, we are still down with Nvidia negative five and AMD double digits negative 14. And the same to be said when we expand to the last 30 days, Nvidia is still down, although fairly marginal at 2%. AMD with a larger drop at around 8.4. Now we are currently led to believe that the semiconductor space are in fact exempt from tariffs, although a lot of analysts believe when you consider the wider market that actually the chip industry will still be affected by the reciprocal tariffs. And this is because the AI industry itself is not safe and that it will get hit in many different ways. When we dive a little bit deeper into the article, it talks about how semiconductors are spared for now from Trump and his tariffs. They have excluded chips, but most of the other AI data center components are at least for now vulnerable and that there is pretty much broad exposure that tariffs do hit essential data center gears like servers, cooling power systems and networking hardware which is often sourced from China and that the rising cost for example non-chip components that make up 25 to 33 percent of data center costs and other potential future tariffs on chips could ultimately worsen the situation and that higher financing costs and trade uncertainty are likely to freeze or in fact delay AI infrastructure projects like the 500 billion Stargate initiative and that companies may pause or scale back some of these plans given the unclear tariff rules and some of the volatile trade policies. But ultimately the conclusion here is that some analysts believe that major players like Google, like Microsoft will continue building due to the AI strategic importance and some of the long-term gains. Now, what do the institutions think about it given we now have the release of quarter one 2025 data if we look at nvidia first ownership sits around 65 percent they sold around 68 billion worth of shares over the last year but they bought a ton more we're talking nearly 400 billion so clearly very bullish on nvidia and we can back this up given q1 data as well institutions bought over five billion dollars worth of shares in the company while selling 52 million that is a very clear indication that institutions are very bullish on the flip side we have advanced micro devices with around 71 percent ownership that is slightly higher than nvidia but we actually notice a little bit more selling than buying around 20 billion worth of sales 19 billion worth of buys so you could argue purely based on that they're neither bullish or bearish on the company yet when we take a look at the most recent quarter we do notice a lot more buying than selling so again whilst you can say in the more recent period institutions are more bullish than bearish what we did notice with nvidia was that institutions were buying a significant amount more shares than they were in fact selling so purely from an institutional perspective they are clearly more bullish on nvidia at the moment than they are on amd now we can see a very strong bounce this morning on nvidia up around seven percent over the last year it's up 20 percent year to date in fact down 22 percent as we can see they've lost more than one fifth of their market cap but over the last 10 years incredible performance massive outperformance in fact of the s p 500 up nearly 19,000 percent trading in the mid to lower end of the 52 week range wall street consistently giving this a strong buy rating and seeking alpha also giving this a buy now unlike amd they do pay a dividend although very low at 0.04 percent and we will shortly get into the valuation we then move on to amd which is also up this morning at around five percent but over the last year they're down around 48 percent pretty much half their market cap in just the last 12 months and year to date the company down nearly 28 percent so again they've lost more than one quarter of their market cap in just the last few months over the last 10 years 
Similar to Nvidia though, they have massively outperformed the S&P, but they are trading pretty much right there near their 52 week low. Now we don't get a strong buy rating from Wall Street, but they do believe like Seeking Alpha, now is a good time to buy and they do trade at a lower valuation around 17.9 than what we saw from nvidia now talking about valuations nvidia currently trades at a forward p of 23.4 which is significantly lower than their five-year average of 42.9 this is what we would call a severe undervaluation signal and this is also reconfirmed when we take a look at this model essentially the blue tunnel indicating the fair price good to see it increase over time something we want from every company we're investing in but there is massive disparity between where the company sits and even the bottom end. This is what we would call a severe undervaluation signal. But we do note it has an F on the valuation grade. Now you can argue this is perhaps given the sector does sit a lot lower at 17.8. So you are paying a 21% premium. But we're going to get into it. We do believe it deserves the premium. As we can see, a bit of a spoiler alert. Growth sits at an A, profitability at an A+. Plus both of which sit above the sector comparative. And we also note, as we did just show you, it sits around 55% lower than its five year average. And again, the company is growing faster than over the last five years. And in fact, a lot more profitable in terms of the margins. So you could argue Nvidia incredibly attractive, trading at a much cheaper valuation, but its performances are significantly better. We then flip to AMD, which gets a D on the grading, but actually they're trading pretty much in line with the sector median. But as we noticed with Nvidia, AMD as well, they're trading around 57% cheaper than over the last five years. And as you can see, also on the growth and the profitability, they do get a strong A and A minus score. So again, undervaluation does look to be the case for both of these semiconductor companies. And if we look towards their earnings, starting off with Nvidia, over the next four quarters, they're anticipating double digit growth to the EPS, pretty much all for 2026. And over the last four, they have outperformed analyst targets, giving them a 100% track record. And if we look to January 2027, they're trading at a level of around 17. We also want to point out just in their latest quarter, they reported revenue of 39 billion outperforming analyst targets. We can see the large bulk of that, if not the vast majority in the data center, which was up 16% on a quarter by quarter basis. Now their margins are absolutely phenomenal as well. 73% on the gross margin, 61 on the operating and incredible to note 56% on the bottom line. Now AMD does also have some similarities with nvidia where they're anticipating double digit growth to the eps for the next full year and at a bare minimum they have been in line so you could say 100 percent track record and if we look to the end of next year they're trading at a forward valuation around 13.4 whilst also increasing their revenue up 24 percent however what we saw with nvidia was an increase of 12 percent just from the previous quarter with amd it's 24 percent from the same quarter last year so actually growing a little bit slower than nvidia but they are seeing a massive jump to their data center revenue, which was up 69% year on year. And you can clearly tell whilst their margins are still fairly strong, they are significantly lower than Nvidia, 51 gross, 11 on the operating and six on the bottom line. And if we specifically look at the last four years, in comparison, Nvidia and AMD, they've been growing their data center revenue at a very, very incredible rate. But we notice Nvidia, the massive outlier there, triple digit growth. In fact, their data center revenue is up 114% year on year with AMD at 63. And for those that are interested in that same time period, Intel down 10%, that is on a year on year basis. Now looking towards growth, Nvidia get an A as we already alluded to, year on year revenue up 114%, forward looking up 60%, well above the sector in the mid single digit, but also significantly above their own five year average, as we said earlier, they are growing their revenue faster than historical levels. And they also anticipate this to pretty much be the same conclusion with their earnings per share, 37% growth year on year over the next three to five years, well above the sector at 14 and also above their own five year at 28%. If we then compare this to AMD, they get an A year on year, 14% forward looking 19. Now it is above the sector in the mid single digit, but actually much lower than their five year of 34 and 25% respectively. So we notice unlike Nvidia, which was growing much faster than their historical levels, AMD's is a lot slower. And in fact, their percentage increases are quite substantially smaller. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
In terms of EPS, well, they anticipate 29%, again, above the sector at 14, but actually lower than their own five year at 33%. If we do the same analysis on profitability, well, Nvidia gets an A+, 75% gross margin, well above the sector at 51, above their own five year at 66, Bottom line, 56%, again, well above the sector at four, but also significantly above their five-year average. So we're seeing efficiencies to their margins, not just revenue increases, but also margins right across the board, whilst also generating a lot more cash from operations, 64 billion, when the sector is much lower, 111 million, and even their own five years significantly below at 16.51 billion. If we then swing to AMD, where they get an A minus on the same grading, we can in fact see gross margin 53%, slightly above the sector at 50, but above their five year quite significantly at 48.5. Bottom line, 6%, very low in comparison to NVIDIA, marginally above the sector at 4, but we can also see below their own 5-year at 11.4, so not as much efficiency is noted right there. And cash from operations is 3 billion, which is well above their own 5-year at 2.4, and also above the sector at 111 million. Now, if we look specifically at the GPU market share, we can see NVIDIA does have quite a strong presence. They hold around 88% in 2024, which when we look at AMD does it substantially low at 12%. Actually, for quite a significant portion of time, we are noticing Nvidia is only increasing their market share year on year. Whilst AMD is a little bit of a different story, it has actually started to decrease. So we can see, at least for the time being, Nvidia is the global leader. And we can also see with the data center market share, Nvidia just continues to get stronger and stronger, taking a lot of that market share, in fact, away from Intel, which has only decreased. Not long ago, it was sitting at 65% for them, now at 16. AMD currently sitting around the 9% point. However, having said that, there is still opportunity for them to increase even further in terms of their revenue, in terms of the performance of the business, and moving forward, given the fact the CEO believes that by 2028, data centers market share will be around 500 billion, and they see a 60% CAGR compounded annual growth rate, something that they are right now trying to take advantage of. And as we just saw in that latest quarter, data center revenue specific is up 69% on a year-on-year -year comparative. Likewise, at the latest conference, NVIDIA CEO believes that data center revenue for NVIDIA is only a small portion of what it can be. They believe by 2028, unlike Lisa Su, it will be even higher. They see it at more than $1 trillion. So there is definitely opportunities for both AMD and and in fact, Nvidia to continue the large growth that we have seen. And another thing that AMD does have going for it is that CPU market, where in fact the prediction is over the next few years for them to gain more and more away from Intel. Currently, we do see it around the 30% point. By 2029, it is estimated to be around 40, and we can see what that in turn means is that Intel is predicted to lose quite a significant amount. Still, however, they are the market leader, and this is probably one additional layer that AMD are looking at to continue the increase in their top line revenue, their earnings per share, and the business performance overall. And if you just wanted to compare these companies, how they've performed, at least in the most recent period, Nvidia has done significantly better. In fact, positive 19%. AMD, that is a massive drop, near 50%. And over the last five years, Nvidia is the clear winner, up 1,500, with AMD up only 78% in comparison. And the same is to be said for over the last 10 years, Nvidia up more than 19,000%, with AMD still very respectable at 3,278. But as we just saw, the increase in over the last five years has been fairly mediocre. So the large portion of this gain hasn't in fact been in the more recent years. The other thing to note with both companies is that they are in a cyclical industry and you would anticipate the metrics to reflect that, but that's not actually something we see at least for Nvidia their free cash flow has been growing very rapidly at least in the most recent period expected to continue over the next 12 months something we also noticed from their sales growth in fact over the last two years they've had triple digit increases to their top line and we notice double digit isn't something that is new for the company. So when we do take a look at their total sales, we can see 10 years ago, they reported 5 billion in the most recent year, 130. We also notice some other very impressive metrics. Their ROIC, return on invested capital, 71% in the most recent year. When ideally, we want to see a minimum of 12%. And then we move on to their margins, which as we just in fact confirmed, we did notice efficiencies. 
well above the minimum 16%, going from 18, 10 years ago to 62, and their free cash flow. In fact, you could argue this is a free cash flow machine, sitting at 47% in 2025. And then the final metric here, the net debt to EBITDA, this signals how strong the balance sheet is, and it tells us the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Below 1.5 is what we want to see, and this effectively tells us over the last 10 years and expected over the next 12 months, it won't even take NVIDIA one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Then when we see the exact same metrics for AMD, in terms of the free cash flow, we do get that inconsistency we were talking about earlier, something we didn't really spot with Nvidia. That's also reflected on their sales growth, although more often than not, they do report some very strong numbers to their top line. And we can see 10 years ago, 4 billion in sales, 26 billion in 2024. In terms of ROIC, again, nowhere near as impressive as Nvidia. In fact, 3% in 2024, low single digit in the two years before. And then in terms of the margins, we're not getting any consistency. We're in fact also not seeing here any efficiencies and the free cash flow margin, the same to be said, fairly inconsistent. And the net debt to EBITDA, however, does look very strong, at least from 2019. And moving forwards, it doesn't even take them, similar to Nvidia, one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Just before we jump into our own valuation, we want to let you know we have released our latest free weekly article. We send one every single Monday morning where we cover severely undervalued stocks as well as what's going in the market over the last few days. So click below, you can sign up and read straight away where you'll also be able to gain access to 35 undervalued stocks for the month of April. Lots of information for each one, the upside that Wall Street themselves see over the next year. And on top of that, you can grab a spreadsheet of 97 stocks that Wall Street themselves believe have the most upside in the S&P right now. So click below, you can sign up and read straight away. Now jumping into our intrinsic value for video, we get to $160. This is derived from the DCF model. And if you're someone who has been watching our episodes over the last few days, you'll notice we did use the low conservative rate. However, that is just something we use to show you in fact the margin of safety is still fairly strong even at the low growth assumptions. We, however, believe for both NVIDIA and in fact AMD, medium is most appropriate. Now, when we take a look at the growth rate, that is 20%. Bear in mind, over the last five and 10 years, they have grown their free cash flows at a triple digit rate, 104 over the last 10, 153 over the last five. And you'll also notice the low, medium, and high, 15, 20, and 25 are subjective. You can always grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, running through your own numbers, whether in fact is for Nvidia or AMD. But based on 20% and the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together, with a cash subtract total debt get to the equity value divide by the shares outstanding and as you can see 162 indicating 55 percent upside now we're not done just there we in fact always like to add a margin of safety where we use 10 percent execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria wide moat strong financial metrics and good forward-looking data if you believe that today at by 146 dollars then in fact we keep going till it's near the current trading price and what you can see right now for nvidia not at 40 percent just yet but you're getting bang on 35% MOS with Wall Street themselves seeing 69% upside over the next year. Their price target is $177. Now give us your thoughts about Nvidia. We'll also move on to AMD. But just before we do, we also want to show you using the low growth rate what the margin of safety would be. So if we see this at 15%, you can in fact see at a 10% margin of safety, it would be a buy around the levels today at $104. And that is what we would say is fairly conservative. However, again, these numbers are subjective. Then flipping to AMD, we have $137. Again, the process is the same. As we mentioned, our growth rate would be 25%. But if you want to be conservative, we will shortly show you 20%. But based on this, we see upside of 56%. And we also always apply that margin of safety at 10% of buy 123. And as in fact, we do keep going on today's episode, not at 40% MOS just yet, but very similar to Nvidia, we see around a 35% margin of safety with Wall Street themselves, $147 price target. They anticipate 67% upside. Now give us your thoughts, whether you believe AMD or Nvidia is the better buy right now. We will also show you for those that believe the conservative rate is better at 20%, what the margin of safety would be at 10% is pretty much where we see this. Again, Wall Street's forecast is fixed. They see 67% upside. Don't forget, as always, to sign up to the free weekly newsletter. Give us your thoughts below. Also, come and join us in the Patreon where we cover our weekly buys and sells. And have a great day. We'll see you all on the next one.